Victor Scotty Jr. is the creative director of Our Space. With only weeks away from graduating a Veda Institute in Arlington, he is on a mission to ensure spaces in the beauty industry are expansive enough for everyone to fit. Today, we're going to hear about how he is building himself, pursuing a passion, and affecting change. Welcome back to the Hairdresser Strong Show. My name is Robert Hughes, and I am your host. And today, I'm with Victor. How are you doing today, Victor? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you so much for coming back. Anybody who's listening or watching, uh, you can check out Victor's story of how he got to where he is and a little bit about uh, what he's thinking about for the future. Today, we're going to dive into that and uh, expand upon it. And also, if you're listening when this is dropped and it's still uh, spring of May 24, 2024, uh, he is also going to be sitting on a panel uh, at the Beauty Business Brunch. And so you can even get to ask him questions personally. All right. So let's get started, uh, Victor. So why don't you start off? I would like to know what is our space? Yeah, um, no, thanks for asking. Um, so our space is really um, an amalgamation of different things. So at its core, it is a holistic uh, wealth, wellness and healing space. Um, and that extends to both uh, physical, like brick and mortar, because I definitely see that in my future. Um, but it also uh, consists of, I think, other opportunities for us to be able to come together to learn and to grow. Um, so our space and space in particular um, actually stands for a number of different things. So it stands for safety, play, agency, community, and exploration. As I think about uh, my own uh, upbringing um, and different opportunities that I've had um, and, how, and how they have affected me, when I think about those five words, I think that every um, individual um, both on a spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical level, we need those things. Um, so I know personally, I move at the speed of safety. Uh, play is what really fuels my creativity. Um, agency uh, pushes me to say what I mean and mean what I say, um, and also hold others accountable. Um, you can't do anything alone is a personal belief of mine. So finding like-minded peers and really building that community is important. Um, and I feel that what keeps you growing is the space to explore. And so I think uh, really what those words encapsulate are my own personal values. Um, and that is how I live. That's how I lead. Um, and that's also how I like to share energy and space with other people. Um, so I look at, and like you said, I'm weeks away from school. I'm so excited for finishing school. I'm so excited. Um, but I like to look at my chair right now in school, you know, as our space. I think about um, the opportunity, you know, to sit here with you and share a bit of more about me, um, about our space and about my thoughts. That also is um, encapsulated in our space. Um, also, in a plug, I've been developing my own uh, hair oil, which um, if you go to my Instagram, I have a shop on Instagram that you can buy it. Um, that is also a part of our space, using um, aromatherapy and herbs to really stimulate the scalp, stimulate our senses, stimulate um, really our energy. Um, and so ultimately, um, as I grow and as I continue to do a number of different things, our space will remain that umbrella um, of, of opportunities for us to be. Um, and as I like to say, we all deserve to feel beautiful uh, just because. And so I want our space to really be a beacon of that throughout the industry. I love that so much. Uh, you know, I um, first of all, I love your concept and uh, and in and in a uh, in terms of like a structure, you say and talking about your umbrella, um, I can totally relate because I I too have an umbrella called Hatching Imagination, and mm. it is a it is a place where uh, ideas come to life. And I'm like an idea person, big time, you know. Yes, so, same. Uh, Hairdresser Strong is an idea that is has come to life under the Hatching Imagination umbrella. So I I totally get it, and I love this our space. And and uh, congratulations on getting through to the near the end of school. Um, I'm sure you. you're gonna finish 
you know, with flying colors and, um, and then, okay. So, all right. So now we've established that. So let's talk about where you, in terms of like what you're looking at. Um, let's start with, um, so we have looking forward, building yourself, pursuing a passion, affecting change. So our space is, uh, it sounds like it's going to kind of be part of like how you communicate uh, with the industry in terms of advocacy. Is that right? Do I got that right? Yes. Um, okay. I think that that is definitely a core component. Um, I think as I've entered into this industry um, and also entering in with um, I would venture to say maybe a non-traditional perspective. I think that, uh, like for me, I, I am 33. Um, I had a career in corporate America before coming into the, uh, to, into the beauty industry. When I look around at a lot of my peers in school, a lot of them are right out of high school or maybe a couple years out of high school. And not to overemphasize age, um, but I think that when I look at my background, I'm bringing a couple of different experiences to uh, this industry. I think that for me, um, having worked with students before, um, having been in human resources, um, I think a lot about people and I think a lot about our experience. It, well, our experiences, um, but also our experience in a given space. And so when I think about affecting change in this industry, I think that there's a lot that I want to put my imprint on. Um, I think that cosmetology school, while it's widely, I think, understood, especially once you enter in, <laughs> and definitely, I think, amongst um, stylists, uh, who I talk to who are, you know, out of school and, and for in varying lengths of time will tell you that, it, you know, it, it prepares you for or it should prepare you really well for the state board. But of course, there is a, a gap and always things to learn. That's one of the things I love about this industry. There's so much to learn, but there is there is a gap between, I think, like exiting school directly and for a lot of us potentially being the stylist that you want to be you know, if you have that defined for you. Um, but even, even with that reality, I still think that there's a number of different things that school can do. Um, I want to actually start by thanking, you know, your platform for opening my eyes as someone entering into this space to different things that I've since utilized and have been life-changing. So um, shout out to David Castle, who was on your um, your show with Industry Aligned. I work with oh, him. Yeah. Um, I work with him once a week or once every two weeks, and it has completely nice. transformed my awareness of my body, um, how I feel, you know, when I'm at school. Um, and I can only imagine I'm only at the beginning of my career. So I can only imagine, um, you know, not really understanding body mechanics 10, 15, 20 years into our career. That, for example, I think that that is something that needs to be touched on, at least in school, right? Even if it's a seminar from someone like that, you know, giving you, um, you know, different tips and tricks. I also think about uh, L'Oreal has a great um, program made for stylists, um, by stylists called Heads Up uh, Mental Health Keys. And so they actually incorporate some of that movement and stuff like that as well, but also the mental, emotional, you know, cognitive effects, um, you know, of styling. I think a lot about just like health and safety, given that we work with a lot of chemicals. And so I've had to really um, up my intake of different herbs and things like that, which has led into the oil that I have. Um, so I, I personally uh, think about holistic wellness a ton. Um, but when I think about, you know, longevity, you know, in this industry, I think that there is so much to consider given how physical, you know, the job is that I think that that is something, um, you know, that should be introduced in school. Um, another thing is to the conversation that we were talking about before we, you know, started the podcast, like generational wealth, and not even just generational wealth, but money management. So actually, let me start there. I think that generational wealth potentially can be down the line, depending on, you know, circumstances and where you're starting from, but managing money, um, we touch a lot of cash still in this industry, you know, a lot of Venmo, Cash App, taxes, 
right? I think that there are so many skills um, that we could be learning, you know, while we're in that space. I also want to be fair to the industry in that also having, you know, having a degree um, from an undergraduate degree, there's so many life skills that also aren't taught in college either. <laughs> so unfortunately, this is not unique to uh, the beauty industry. So I do want to provide that holistic perspective. But I think as a trade in the trade space, I think there's so much that we can do since we are trained directly to industry to truly be prepared for that. Um, I think one of the other things that comes to mind, especially now, now that I'm talking to different salons, I'm exiting um, the school space, is, is literally that leap to industry. Um, I've gone on different I have shadowed different um, salons, but even being in interview processes and me as a HR person, I'm like, okay, like, are there three interviews? Like, you know, who am I talking to and what's going on? And I found that it's very much a, a, a vibe and a, and a feeling. And, and I don't mean to, uh, <laughs> to, to make it sound not serious, but I do think that we can add more structure and rigor. And when I think about also as a, diversity and inclusion practitioner, when I think about equity, when I think about people having the information that they need to be able to make decisions appropriately, I worry about our industry, especially given the age and experience level of folks entering in, I worry about how that has effects on our finances, on our bodies, um, you know, on our overall experiences and how that affects going back to um, one of my core values, really agency. How do I make sure I have the information I need to understand if this will be a good fit or not? Um, and so I think that there's a lot more rigor um, and process that we, um, I think, need to add, um, you know, into the conversations that we're having and the matching that's taking place really for their longevity um, of our of our industry. Um, well, so I can uh, talk all day, so I'll pause well, What's there. an example of that? Like, what's an example of something that you would want to add? Um, I think really just a general structure. So I, there are a few salons that I think are really leading the way um, and have that, but I think providing um, various touch points of opportunities um, to really learn more about people on a behavioral level, um, understanding what it is that um, they do really well, um, and spaces where they want to grow um, from a technical level. And then I think also goal alignment, um, you know, like to, to the best of your ability, like where is it that you want to be? Um, realistically, for salon owners and on the salon side, like what can we provide? Um, and, and how can we both push each other right, from the stylist, but also the, you know, the owner's side um, or, or those folks to really be able to grow and, and learn together. Um, so I think having those like literal touch points. Um, like, as what a, what, give me an example. Like uh, if someone is like, I love all this, but I'm not really 100% clear. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I think a tangible example would be um, as we're getting to know people in the industry, I think instead of open ended conversations and visits, actually figuring out, deciding, I think, as a salon, what is it that we're looking for? Are we looking for a fit into our culture, which I think needs to be defined? Are we looking for technical skill at this new style at new talent level? What does that look like, right? And then are we looking for, you know, alignment to goals? Here's what we offer in terms of education, you know, and, and other benefits. Does that align? And literally, I think, um, you know, asking that um, and then being able to assess that during, during that interview process. So, so, so I think, I, we, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I think it looks like both having really intentional conversations, um, but I think also being really honest about the vision for like the salon or the space 
um, and how you're looking for folks to grow and being honest about what you might not have yet in place um, that, that might be on the roadmap. So I think literally sharing that information back and forth will help uh, folks make a more informed decision and owners to be more comfortable with the talent coming into their spaces. So, uh, so I, I mean, I love, I love this. Uh, I love the way this sounds and I, I really do want to expand on it. Um, uh, so just to like create a, create a, um, kind of like kind of tie this all together or tie it off if you will. Um, not that I want to move on, but like to like, just to make sure it's complete, uh, for anybody who is like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so for example, so like, um, say I'm a salon owner and, yeah. uh, you're, you're, a, you're a stylist that's coming to, uh, to, to, uh, apply to you or you're, or you're, I'm, I'm one on your list of, of, uh, of a salons that you're interested in. Um, okay. so, so what, so, uh, so like, for example, having on my website potentially, or maybe making some videos of me talking about the business, uh, about, mm -hmm. and then, and then I, I'm going to ask you to correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, mm -hmm. so like I create some videos and be like, Hey, what's up? You know, you come work in my salon. This is our vibe. Uh, this is the type of person we're looking for. Uh, this is the, what, what we have in terms of education. Uh, this is what, uh, the growth path would be like if you come to work here. Here's a couple of scenarios of what growth would could look like based on based on you or based on us or based on the economy or based on, or whatever. I mean, you know, like what are all these different types of ways that you could grow in our in our business and like things to you know caveats. You know, like if there's a yeah, things happen in life and business that might derail that. But maybe I just that's a disclaimer I make in the videos like, hey, this is the standard practice here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, is that one? Is that what you're kind of part of what you're talking about? Yes, I do think that's a great part of what I'm talking about. Okay. I think that's something that I would that if I was interested in a place, I would want to know that information and have it be readily accessible. I think the part that what I can offer that I think is super tangible, um, and this is a, a body of work, and I actually have to shout out my husband for introducing me to this body of work, but it's called structured interviewing. I won't go super in depth on all that there is within that, but I think what I can offer to salons are to say, hey, our process, you know, as we're thinking, number one, do we have the bandwidth to take on new talent? That's literally a yes or no. Because I've also gone on conversations and people are like, well, we don't, we don't really have anything. You know, we just kind of want to meet. Cool. <laughs> but I think it, we need to align on like what the goal is. And literally, okay. and again, I'm putting my HR hat on, is the headcount there? Right? Yes. Right. Cool. Here's what our interview process looks like. Maybe the first step is, you know, uh, you're shadowing somebody for three hours. This is literally your time to shadow. Um, we don't have expectations, you know, necessarily of you providing a service or, but you can ask questions, you know, you can get your own feel on what this could be like for you. We can have a conversation after that to see if you would like to move on in the process. Maybe the second step could be, you know, like a technical interview or alignment. You know, we at least want new talent coming in to be able to do a great shampoo, which looks like this, and a blow dry, which looks like this. Let's see, you know, what that looks like for you. Okay. Uh, sorry. So do you, I love, okay, this is great. So our first question, because you're from, uh, from you've, you've worked in other industry, uh, yes. is, is that a standard practice in other industries being like, Hey, before, before we start, this is what you should expect. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And I would say that has been one of the most challenging things for me. Okay. Uh, because I think that things can be presented very much open ended. Like, come on yeah. in. I'm like, sure. <laughs> you know, but like, to do what? Right. Like, <laughs> Like, I don't want to go too hard on the interview front where you're like, wait, this is not even an interview. We're just meeting. Right. Or I also right. don't want to come with my whole bag of stuff. And it's like, what do you mean? We're, you're not doing anything technical. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what? That's, yeah. Because like my experience is, um, 
the salon owners typically want to maintain a level of flexibility in their uh, ability to make decisions in their business. So that's, I think, where the um, uh, where the source of the uh, unfortunate uh, abundance of uh, social media content that mm -hmm. is saying that salon there's a lot of toxicity in salon with salon yeah. owners you know i definitely think that because like it i think it all i think a lot of it boils down to that other than other than blatantly lying or stealing or yeah. abuse or you know all the stuff that i think it would be hard for anybody to talk their way out of uh but but this kind of like idea this has been my experience is like i don't it's like, I don't want to put things on paper. I don't want to put things in, like, I don't want to put, yeah. they're like, they don't want to put anything that you can try to hold them to yeah. uh, because they don't want to say, well, this is my business too bad. They don't want to say that because they know that how you're going to react, but they will say that. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. and so I love that you said that. And here's my thing. I'm like, well, how do I know? <laughs> how do I know that what you say is actually going to be what you do if it's not written down. How do oh. I know? How can I assess integrity and growth plans and things like that if it's communicated to me casually as opposed to a place I can like at, um, access and, and for it to be a resource? And I think tying this all together too Again, you know, when we think about, I think that those are, I think that there are two different things going on. I think that salon owners will be salon owners. A, a, me as a new talent stylist, in my mind, there's no way that I can come for your vision for your salon. And so, and I say that not saying that anyone suggested that, but the ability to like maintain the right to make decisions will always be that person's, right? And so I think it's a false choice to think that that could potentially be threatened. Um, I think the other piece though is- By the way, you know, that's awesome. I love that statement, by the way. Yeah, because I, I, and I see that a lot in this industry and feel free to redirect me because now I'm, I'm just, I'm excited. <laughs> and so I see this a lot in this industry. I think about it with classes too. You know, you still kind of have some stylists who are like, what do you mean you like, you're interested in that technique? Well, I'm like, we like, there are multiple people who do color, right? So like my color is never going to be exactly the same as yours. Um, but me, you know, understanding more about a technique that you do, um, number one, that doesn't take away it being your technique. Right. Uh, you know, but I might be putting my own spin on it, you know, right. And like, and if you want to share, charge me, right. Like make it a class, charge for the class. And then like, you're getting, you know, kind of that stance to say like, this is your technique and like I paid to learn it. Um, but so I think that we need to think outside of like, this is not an individual profession. I mean, oh. being a business owner is not an individual task. Like you're literally leading and managing people um, and you're shepherding a vision. And so I don't believe that you can effectively shepherd um, and, and not be able to, to be able to share a clear vision um, and to be able to actually give feedback and also share expectations. And so I think there's also an alignment here with school. I think if we could align, you know, as an industry on high level expectations and what to me, what that might look like is here's a technical, here's a family of technical expectations that I would have of a new talent stylist. So maybe that means, you know, basic blow drying, shampooing, whatever, right? Schools can make sure that we're at minimum prepared to do that. Right. If I know that there's going to be a behavioral component, right, of the interview um, for folks who might have never had interview prep before, never created a resume before, those types of things we could be doing in school. Right. So then by the time we're leading there, you know, I'm prepared with the information that I need to provide to you. You're giving me information that I need to know, though, about what I might be entering into. 
So one of the things that I have noticed in this industry is that there, there's kind of like a tug of war, <laughs> um, you know, and it comes down to power. Um, and ultimately, I think it comes down to capitalism, but I'm not going to get on that. Um, I'm not going to get on that soapbox because then it'll be a really long conversation. <laughs> um, but I think that transparency um, is really important. And I think that if we really want, if we really say that we want to grow people and to grow stylists, like I see a lot about being a six-figure stylist. And if we really want people to be able to grow, then we have to provide them with clear expectations, feedback, and direction and vision. That's good. Yeah, and um, I do think that it would be nice to see the schools, uh, um, you know, handling, like, the interview prep, um, also, like, basic understanding. Like, my experience is that the schools are, uh, okay, first of all, the the schools, the teachers, the directors, they say the owners they say that they do teach the students um that they like like realistic expectations for the majority of salons to have to train uh once you get out of school and they say tell me that uh the students think that they're they don't know what they're talking about and if they were so successful then why are they teaching at a school that's literally what the teachers are saying to me that the students are saying to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, but I don't, I mean, I'm not in the school. Um, and I actually applied to, uh, teach at, um, Paul Mitchell, but I never got a response back just so that I could get in <laughs> there because there was a position open and I would just wanted to get in there just to like see for myself, you know, if that meant committing, yeah. committing to like working there for a while, then I could, uh, I would have done that. But anyway, so one, I, do you have a, do do is has that been your experience? Um, that hasn't personally been my experience. I mean, I feel like I can learn from anyone. Um, I think every conversation is an opportunity to learn whether you're whether there is a dynamic of director, instructor, peer, you know. So like for me, it doesn't I can walk down the street and learn something new. So I don't walk into spaces thinking a lot about hierarchy or positional dynamics. Um, I choose to think more about, you know, agency, safety, play, communication, and exploration, you know? So, um, like, that's just how I move in the world. Um, I strongly believe on a holistic level. I think that mirroring the industry, I think that school cosmetology school through conversations that I've had with folks across varying different schools. So I'm also not talking about one school. Again, I don't think it's as structured as it may seem. I think there are broad buckets, like you're in the classroom, you're on the clinic floor, but there's, there's so much in between there. How should I work with instructors once I'm on the floor, right? How are we bringing to life principles of haircutting that we learned in the classroom? And now I'm faced with, like, I know how to do a layer, but it's on this particular head shape. This person is asking for this cut. Like, I think I know what a butterfly cut is, but maybe not, right? So again, I think there's, there's so much in the middle and gray areas. And personally, I think because we don't have specific expectations of like, this is what this is what you're here to learn in school. Like, I know the, the curriculum is what it is, but here's what we're committed to teaching you. Here's how, as an instructor, I can help. And here's what I'm asking of you as a student, right? I'm asking you, how best do you learn? You know, do you, is it uncomfortable for me to stand and watch you? Or do I need to give you space, you know, and come back? So I say that, I mean, I, I think of your question and I think, we get very much into very specific scenarios and the semantics, but I think if we zoom out, I'm like, I think that people have such varying experiences because we don't know what we're supposed to experience. When I entered, and I'll speak for myself, when I entered this cosmetology school, I literally only knew that there was a classroom portion and on the clinic floor. I had no idea what anything else 
consisted of. And even through like my visit and like talking to people, I'm like, I know they're educators, but like, I don't like, do they stand with me throughout a whole haircut or do I, do they walk away and come back? You know, I also do have a very type A mind. So, I mean, I think about small details, but I think when you're creating a learning program, that's important. Um, and I think if you don't have that, you can get all types of feedback. So I think that that feedback that you shared, I don't want to, it to seem like I'm rendering it invalid, or I do think that that, that is folks' experience. But I, I am leading with inquiry and and like, what what could have pre potentially prevented even that question? And I think understanding the full scope of, you know, what folks' roles are and, and how we're here to work together um, can really help that. So I think that, I, I, don't, I don't currently think that we have that in the industry. And I think that that's a, both a pain point and a place that we can beef up. I think, uh, I think what you're talking about, um... It's it, it it just requires a certain amount of uh, organizational organization and thoughtfulness that uh, and in, leadership. Pla in place. Well, yeah, in leadership in places that I'm not sure that we've I don't know. Have we really had it? Um, I mean, I remember when I I remember when I was coming up and I did my apprenticeship program. Um, I didn't really know either what was going on. Um, I was a teacher at a hair school and mm -hmm. um, and I felt like it was super, super structured, but that could have just been my experience because I'm a little type A too. And yeah. <laughs> I and I and I'm like and I like the rules. Like these yeah. are the rules. Like we're gonna stay in the rules. And there wasn't a lot of gray area. And mm -hmm. but I also think that culturally, uh, in within our industry and maybe abroad, maybe beyond, uh, I think that the gray area has expanded. And uh, maybe the gray area has expanded. Like, like there's a lot of like, oh, like okay, back in, back when I was a teacher, and I feel like we're gonna kind of go and so we could go off to way off left field on. Yeah on talking but um just to complete the thought well when i was teaching um well i shouldn't say was because i still teach but i have evolved my teaching style uh but when i when when i was teaching earlier in my career i it was very much militant style teaching there was like there's a right way there's a wrong way and if you did it wrong you need to do it again until you get it right now if it's a little more like well what is your interpretation how do you feel about this and that opens up opens people up in my, pers my from what i've seen as a teacher now that the younger people have such a like a, a loose if any understanding of the foundations which are required in order to build upon and yeah. so like so I'm wondering if there's something there. I don't know. But like how I've evolved my teaching is I still lay heavily into the theory and um, I still lay heavily into like structured stuff. And I make sure they I, people understand this is a classroom. You're going to there's you're not going to have a lot of room for interpretation. I run jam sessions where you could bring in pictures or model and you can work on them and mm -hmm. uh, I'll help you work on them through them. And that is way more open interpretation. But like if you're coming to learn about how to cut this haircut, then you're going to cut it the way I tell you to cut it. And we're going to talk through it and then you're going to go back into your world and then you're going to use that and layer that interp your interpretation of what your experience was onto your clientele um but like there's a lot of teaching that is like oh, i'm just going to show you some stuff and like i feel like this and like oh mm -hmm. i did this over here you know i don't think that that's good education but i think that's more inspiration i think that's like more in the creative space but like but like there needs to be some sort of structure to like mm -hmm. the point of the like uh, that's the biggest point i'm taking away um i think maybe there needs to be a little more thought and when it comes to structure um anyway i think I, don't I know think that's... so. And I'll just say one last thing on it. I think that there are, I also believe that there are fundamentals. And I think that I, I what I will say from my experience level, having still been in school, I wouldn't say that I have a super firm grasp on, on, how, on when to say this is fundamental and this isn't. I do feel like uh, my education, I've gotten a lot of fundamentals and I've noticed that 
as I there, I'm able to and actually feel comfortable, you know, experience experimenting, but then also like taking things that I also see and learn from other places, and then connecting that to theory and being able to come out with something that has my stamp on it, but also is technically sound. I think that the piece that makes it, I imagine, might make it really um, challenging, especially for instructors, is social media. And that, you know, people are calling things a lot of different things. Sometimes I'll show an instructor, they're like, this is like, like technically this is X, like right. sure for like the butterfly or like this, that, and the third, but technically this is X, right? So like you can do that, but, and this actually combines what we learned here, here, and here. So I think that I could see how social media can definitely be an asset and it could help in the learning process, but I could also see how that could be um, a distraction, um, you know, if you're not really able to kind of parse out what is kind of in that purely creative space versus like, you know, the fundamentals of literally being able to cut you know, a head of hair. So I think that's also where it starts to get a bit dicey. So uh, I think that this conversation has been super awesome. I know we're running up on time and I want to respect your time. So uh, before I say anything else uh, that might cause us to want to talk more about something, how are you on time? I can go over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A little bit. All mm -hmm. right. Okay. So what I was going to say was the, um, I was talking to a salon owner and he's known for being like incredibly brilliant when it comes to formulations and color for color. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really strongly believes in the foundational understanding of color. He also has his own opinion of how foundations should be ta taught, but nonetheless, foundations slash fundamentals uh, that I'm using that word interchangeably. And yeah. uh, so uh, he was telling me that L'Oreal used to have a, uh, foundations of color or or like a color boot camp or color mm -hmm. in depth or something class it was a multiple day course and uh, I want to say it was it was more than two days I want to say it was like three or four days and um, he said now they've whittled it down to being like not even a full day and when he asked them why he said because we've pulled the customers and that's how they, that's the type of education they want. They don't want to go through like a long thing. They don't want this intense thing, you know, and then, and then that there's, so I'm going to just leave that right there. Now mm -hmm. there's another something that I want to share. And then when you add them all together, it's conjecture maybe, but, uh, but nonetheless, I think that there's a story being told here. And uh, so the other thing is you brought up social media and I, 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 I can't believe I didn't even bring that up, but like, yes, social media has, has, um, to the industry has created a ton of, um, kind of like, I want to call it cookie cutters. Like, mm -hmm. um, I want to learn this haircut. And so then I'm going to take this haircut and I'm going to go and do that haircut on clients. Cause that's the haircut they want. And like, it makes sense. It makes sense that you're going to do the haircuts that customers want, because that's how that's literally like how it works. And so, right. uh, so if you're, if you're coming up and you, you have the industry has been moving away from intensiveness, intensively teaching foundations and fundamentals at, in, in general. And, uh, and you couple that with this concept of like, kind of like flash commercial uh, repeat. Like what, what, what do I see now? I need to go. I need to learn how to do this, but like, you'd know how to do that. If you had a strong foundations, I can literally yeah. look at pretty much any haircut and I can recreate that haircut, you know, assuming that it's, I'm assuming I let's say like there are some haircuts that are super tight framed, obviously yeah. that I might not be able to see. But like if I could see the haircut, you know, even one angle, I could probably recreate that Great. haircut, mm -hmm. you know. So but like if you need to take a haircut to how to learn how to do a wolf cut, then you don't have strength in your foundations, mm -hmm. period, full stop. So mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that like that's kind of like my kind of how I see see this stuff. And so like when you kind of throw all of that back into the conversation we were talking about, um, 
we're talking about adding structure in the industry. So like maybe there's a trend shift where people are going to have a lar larger appreciation for foundations and fundamental learning and uh, be more focused on craft. That is actually a prediction of mine that you're, we're going to see people moving back, moving towards being like, you know what? I've realized this whole social media doing hair by way of social media uh, is actually super shallow. It lacks incredible depth and it is not setting me up for my, for the success of my for my future so yeah. i actually have to go back a little bit and i need to kind of re revamp myself and kind of like make sure that i bring up my foundational understanding of my craft and um and then and also pick my educators a little more wisely you know if you're picking like an influencer to come in and do a haircut but they're not going through theory and they're just like, and they can't explain why they're doing things and they can't answer every question, then yeah. maybe consider never ever paying them for a class again. That's my uh, plug right there for <laughs> education. And I mean, <laughs> I, I, this is a great conversation and I agree. And I, I, my prediction to add on to yours, I do think, I do predict that we'll go back to the fundamentals. Um, and I think that we, like probably all need to together kind of define what that means so that we're coming from a shared understanding. But I actually think it's going to be led by the guest because oh. I think that the guest is going to notice like, okay, you gave me this, like maybe this, the exact thing that I wanted that I told you I wanted, but it literally doesn't look the best on me. Right. For, oh, for right. various reasons that we can go back to with theory, but if the stylist and the provider doesn't know that, right, that will lead to client dissatisfaction. So I think there's dissatisfaction as defined by the guest. But I also think medically, if you will, I think when I think about the scalp and I think about some of these products that people are using, the amount of product, the tension um, when you and when you get into adding hair, uh, installs not being done correctly, alopecia. So I, I so I predict that I agree with your overall prediction, but I think along the way um, is going to be client dissatisfaction across a number of different parameters, and I think uh, you know medically, unfortunately, I do predict that folks will be struggling, and so I think that we'll have to go back to the fundamentals because I think that we're going to hit an inflection point, you know, in this industry. Um, my hope is that, and, and my push and then back to affecting change, what I would offer is that my, I, I, I want us to start talking about that now and start framing our conversations that way, you know, as opposed to saying, I think you have kind of like, this old guard, like, oh, y'all are following Instagram. Y'all ha have no idea what it's like to be a stylist and the fundamentals. Then you have the younger folks, like, I have clients coming in asking me for this haircut. I need you to help me with this haircut. I'm not trying to go back to sheer overcome, holding my hands this way. So I, I get it. But I think that we, I would rather us come together and try to figure that out together before it becomes crucial because it will become crucial. Nothing is new under the sun. It all come back around. Things have been deemed fundamentals for a reason. I'm not saying that there isn't room to add on to that or shift that. I think that's when the conversation about texture comes in. I think there are some core fundamentals of texture that right now are not considered fundamentals because there are still folks out here who have no idea how to work with curls and coils, right? Hold so on. I think there's the ability to both interrogate and to add on. Um, but I think our clientele and ultimately our pocketbooks are going to be the catalyst for deep change in the industry. And I, I hope that we can actually begin to make that change for the health and integrity of our industry before it becomes absolutely critical. I love this. Well, uh, this is so good. I feel like that's a great place to uh, wrap it up. And um, I, I feel like there's so many more things we could talk about. And um, Always. I, I, 
You I, have I, to make me a regular. I was going to say that. I was going to say you could be a, regu uh, a regular contributor to the Hairs of the Strong show. Um, we could even do some IG lives and see if any, any like, oh, yeah, I would love that. Jump on. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that would be cool too. Yeah. Because, like, you've touched, you touched on so many, the tentacles kind of expand out of so many things that yeah. we were talking about. And specifically, well, I want, we, we had a great conversation and we don't have to go like any, like, I'm just going to go deeper and deeper. So yes, this was good. And uh, definitely plan on talking more about this and um, having you on the panel for the, uh, uh, for the beauty business brunch coming up on oh, May 19th. And uh, also your, um, your oil, uh, speaking of plugs, um, yeah. make, we'll make sure to uh, leave whatever links uh, and information okay, in the description about how they can access that. All right, cool. Well, um, I think, uh, yeah, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye.